live. We're reporting live tonight. The show will be airing before we go to the Elite Eight game. If you see us there and would like to buy us a beer, our Venmo is... <laughs> <laughs> Unbalanced Diet. <laughs> Welcome to Balance Sports, a show at the cross-section of women's basketball and a gay time. This is what happens when two best friends catch up twice a week to talk hoops in front of a green screen. From interviews with legends to blunders on camera, covering coaches' game plan and also her wardrobe. We're here to grow the game and have a good time. This is Balance Sports. <laughs> this is Brianna January. I'm Jewel Lloyd. I'm Brianna Stewart. This is Ezzy. And you're watching Balance, Balance Sports. Sports. I'm Jules. I'm Hunter. This is Balance Sports Season 2. Let's jump back into our ranking. The middle of the, the middle. pack. So last episode, we did a one through four. Talked about the top dogs in free agency. Some debates at the four spot. I'm not going to lie. You know, looking back, mistakes were made. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be next week. Join us when we redraft the whole thing. You know, I'm just going to commit to it. I, I like to focus on the fact that I strong-armed you and won, but now five looks wild. <laughs> That's a great place to start. Who is number five in our middle of the pack rankings? We have the Chicago Sky. This team looks fun. Yeah, let's get into it. So they're leading off our mids. They added Elizabeth Williams, Marina Mayberry, and Isabel Harris, as well as Courtney Williams. I feel like they are going to be a fast-paced offensive team. What worries me when I look at it is I don't know who their big is going to be. Maybe going against some of these teams that, like John Quell, Asia, you know, are incredibly deep in that position. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I feel like they are going to be shooting that thing. They most certainly are. They're a wild fifth place, but I think when you think about the fact that they lost Candace Parker, uh, Vandersloot, and Quigley are also sitting out. That's a lot. I mean. That's it's most of your starting lineup. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, the way your record's set excuse up. Excuse me. Excuse me. Azrae Stevens as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. this team looks drastically different. I do really believe in James Wade as a coach. So I'm excited to see where, like how this team's going to look different. Because yeah. I know he's going to have a strategy that they're not just going to be going out there trying to figure it out. I, I just have a feeling they're going to be shooting the hell out of the three. Yeah. Marina Mabry has <laughs> Marina never Mabry seen a shot she won't take. I was like, did you, is that a coded way of saying Marina Mabry? <laughs> Look, Courtney Williams, green light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Kalia Copper, thing. Dana Evans. They're, Rebecca Garner had a great year. Isabel Harrison can shoot, honestly. Mm -hmm. They're, um, yeah. They are yeah. shooters. Shooters. Defensively. <laughs> <laughs> Defensively, there's always... Room to grow. You don't want to start out the season being ab like elite at everything. You want to grow into that. Thank you. All right. Uh, so in our sixth position, we have the LA Sparks. Now, we both came on here and felt so boldly about the things that they had done to really elevate their team. And then you look at the roster. It was just a different feeling. I felt like maybe we got caught up in free agency and it was like, look at the, the sparks are interesting. Ooh, the sparks are doing something. And then like with time to cool off, I'm like, what did they do? What would, huh? What was I thinking? Neka is incredible. Absolutely. And she needed some help. And I think in free agency, they attempted to get her some help. Is it working? By adding? <laughs> uh, Adderay Stevens. And Jasmine Thomas. Absolutely. Um... As well as De'Erica Hamby. Um, Not that we feel any kind of way negatively. We really like De'Erica's game. Absolutely. Just you don't know what her availability is going to be like. Yeah, she's coming off of a pregnancy and injury from last season. So she is. she has said that she is hoping to be ready to go. But your hope doesn't always actualize into, yes, that's actually what's going to happen. This is why I think I'm hopeful for this team. I do agree that if you look at it, it doesn't feel like a drastic change that much from last year. They lost Brittany Sykes. Their guards mostly remain the same. I think Azra is going to be really fun on this team. But we gave Connecticut like the benefit of the doubt yes. being in the finals. Kurt Miller was the coach of those teams. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, I just feel like he, to an organization that... Their leadership the last couple of years have felt like a ship in a storm. <laughs> Questionable. He thinks Kurt Miller is going to study that ship. Okay. And I feel like there's only up to go from where they've been the last couple seasons. Agreed. 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 Solid seventh pick. I'm still not like jazzed about them. 
I don't know. It's I, I look at the roster and it it is going to be fun. They also let go of Kennedy Carter. They did. Who has landed where? Exactly. Yeah. He thinks that the storm should give her a look. Is that I'm, right? I'm not playing. Kennedy Carter? Yeah. Why not? I think the storm, despite their name, like a really consistent, non-wave moving type player. I think and the she's storm- shown a lot of a lot of ability to not be movable at all either. <laughs> I, you know what I like about, okay, you know what I like about this LA team? Did you happen to look at the age, the years of veteran leadership? They have one player, uh, Ray Burrell, who has one year who didn't play last year. Everyone else, I think, has four plus years. Like, this is a seasoned team, and I like that. See, that's called spin, bitch. (laughs) Well, marketing team, you know who to call. Talk me into it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but Kennedy, she could provide a little bit of spark for us here. That's all I'm saying. In more ways than one. <laughs> Sitting in the seventh position, we have the loss. The team of all bigs. <laughs> if uh, you're looking for a big, Dallas has them. Every one of them. If you want to trade midseason, you know who to call for a post. Dallas is not on these teams with a new head coach. Mm-hmm. Vicky Johnson, I believe, headed to the Sparks. She's she like, headed out. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the Sparks, excuse me, the Dream. I believe she is now on the Atlanta Dream. And we have Coach Trammell. First year, second year coach? First coach? year coach in Dallas. Come on now. Love to see Dallas. it. Fresh start. I like Courtney Paris as an assistant coach. Sorry, I was a big fan oh. of her when she was playing. Dallas picked up Diamond Shields. They signed Kalani Brown, who will be coming off an injury. Um, they also picked up Natasha Howard. Come on. They're still anchored by uh, Agumba Wale. Satu Sabali, who, so- if healthy, is a absolute hooper. Absolutely. Tierra McGowan signed a max contract. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Yet yeah, we have them in seventh. All these goods. And I think y'all know why. It, it just fits. I don't think that... I don't think that... Despite all the movement, they moved up any. I think they're still going to be fighting for a playoff position in the low area of the playoffs. I look at this team and I see a lot of talent, but I just don't know how the pieces fit together. So maybe if they can bring that together. And Especially with a first-time head coach. Exactly. So I just have a lot of questions. Dallas, lots of questions for me. Natasha Howard, really like her in a new place. Mm-hmm. I think she could be fun in Dallas with Arike. Arike is always going to get hers. Again, I just don't know. If you look at the experience again, Natasha Howard is a nine-year veteran, and then everyone Diamond else. DeShields is five. Like Everyone else is four and below. I don't know. This doesn't say this is our year to me. Just based on the additions and the lack of veteran leadership, I think you need in order to be a champion. It's screaming youthful exuberance on the court. <laughs> It's screaming mistakes at times, but we're working. Figuring it out. Yeah. Lovely gowns for Dallas. <laughs> Lovely. Finally, the last team we think will make the playoff next year. Wow, when you put it like that, the <laughs> last four teams are getting burned. <laughs> well, we may be adjusting. In this round, this was our eighth placed team. Mm-hmm. We have the Phoenix Marker. Why do you have them so low in the mids? Multiple reasons. I'll tell you them now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they have all-time great players, but we've got to face the facts, and that is we are not sure when Skylar Diggins will be available based on her having a child as well. Congrats, Skylar. Congrats. Dinah Taurasi is who we thought she was, and that is a woman of age who has been going through some injuries. And as good as she is. As you, great. As great as she is. you got to face the facts. Mm-hmm. And BG is home, hallelujah. Yes. She also just hasn't played, so let's give her some time. Absolutely. And I definitely think she could come back and have like an MVP season. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure. just, there's questions here for me as well. What do you think of the one-year contract that she signed? What does that mean, in your opinion? Because Diana signed a two con- two-year contract, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. To me, it means we're either going to try to rearrange some stuff next year, move some things around, and y'all are going to give me a max deal to keep me that player here in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. They re-signed Sophie Cunningham. That's huge for them. 
Mariah Jefferson, Michaela on your Wii Ray. I think it's very interesting a one year contract from Brittany because is this her farewell and she's not going to say anything? I don't blame her like for being like, okay, I want to come back, do one year, and then that's it. Because remember, I had an extremely traumatic experience, and I want to say I love you to the game and then go live my life privately. Or be an advocate for whatever I want, but like not basketball anymore. I could mm. see that being what happens as well. Wow. That would hurt. It would hurt personally, but like remember what she I, went I'm, through. I literally, absolutely, yes, like yes, obviously yes. would support her. It's like when Maya stepped away, it was like I get that you have like a family and you want to go be this other amazing person, Maya. But basketball, right, right, yes. Oh my gosh. Anyways, yes. Uh, yeah, I think they're pretty low because they have some coaching questions. I don't see they they didn't change coaches yet. Skylar Diggins didn't seem to get along with her, not, and not just Skylar, but that was publicly what we knew. And so I can't see running that back with the same coach, given the friction that they had in 2022. I'd have to agree. So until they do something different there, I'm just like, well, why would I believe that she's going to lead them further? Mercury's always that team that they could be right on the cusp of making or not making the playoffs, or they could be in the finals. Facts. It's just going to depend on. <laughs> um, they've got a lot of variables on that their roster. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, that's it, right? That's it for our middle eight. Okay, so that's our episode two of a three part series where we break down the top, middle, and bottom of WNBA free agency. So join us for our last installment. And if you didn't see the first one, go back and watch the first one because it makes more sense. I'm Jules with Balance Sports. I'm Hunter. <laughs>